fiery horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. The rich grazing land of Texas brought wealth and prosperity to many of the early settlers in the western United States. But before the days of the open range passed, there were many bitter fights between the men who raised cattle and those who raised sheep. The masked rider of the plains did his best to settle the disputes without bloodshed. It was he, more than any other man, who brought law and order to the frontier, and the memory of his deeds will remain as long as the memory of the early West itself. And now return with us to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for Maggie McGee's ranch. Hi, oh, Silver. Hello. Maggie McGee, a young widow, was the leader of the sheep herders in the district surrounding Cripple Creek. The cattlemen resented her prosperity and had tried to drive her out of the territory without success. One day, Pete Dexter made a final effort to buy her out. Well, I ain't going, so put that in your pipe and smoke it. Oh, wait a minute, Maggie. Wait, nothing. I don't like your face, your style, your way of doing business, or anything about you, Pete Dexter. I don't even like the way you comb your hair. You don't have to like me, Dad Redded Maggie. You like cash, though, don't you? No. What? What good's cash? Can't eat it, smell it, or use it to keep a house warm. All cash is good for is to spend for things a body can use. Well, all right, then. I don't like cash, and I like the things that cash will buy. For the love of Pete, Maggie, stop being such a cantankerous fire eater so a man can talk sense to you. It ain't me, it's the company. Now make yourself scarce, Dexter. Go on back amongst your cattle-growing partners. This country ain't big enough for the two of us. No. You don't hear me complaining. You shouldn't. Your pesky sheep can get grazing and water all right, but they spoil the country for cows. Cows won't even drink from the stream down below your place just because you're sheep drinking in it. <laughs> Ain't none of my worry if your critters are so particular. Look, Maggie, one of us has got to go. Then go. I ain't going to miss you none. Me and the common don't aim to go. I've given you warnings before. Mm-hmm. And tried a plenty of underhanded schemes to get rid of me. Now, listen, But you got fooled every time. Why, you... Save your breath, Dexter. You've been making threats for as long as I can remember. <laughs> I declare I'd think there was something wrong if I didn't hear you spouting threats every couple of weeks. This is the last time, Maggie McGee. I'm telling you point blank here and now that you sail out to the cattlemen and Val Moose or by Thunder we'll move you. Mm-hmm. Sure thing. You'd better heed what I said. Oh, sure. Sure, Pete. Now, will you get before I stick the dog on you? Well, you got to hear what price we'll pay for your land. If you sell out, the rest of the sheep will do the same. Don't care what the price is. It ain't enough. It's fair, Maggie. I Maggie. ain't selling. Now, I reckon I've stood about all of your company I can stand. Come on, Brownie. <laughs> stick him. Hey, wait. <laughs> all right. Get down now. The good is gone. Quiet down, fella. 
sir. <coughs> That's a good fella. <laughs> I do declare, Brownie Pete Dexter's the biggest fool I ever heard of. The nerve of him thinking I'd take his threat serious and sell out. <coughs> Quiet, Brownie. <coughs> that you again, Dexter? It's me, Lamb. Oh. Morning, Lamb. Hi there, Brownie. What's the idea of you making so much noise? Dexter was just here. I had to let the dog in to chase the pesky rat. Dexter, huh? Ah, that's bad. What's bad about it? I don't take him serious. I know, Maggie. You never did before, but... But... But what? Well, them cowmen are sure up again at these days. Why so? Water. That's their hot luck. Springs have gone dry. And about the only water is what comes through the creek. Ah, oh, savvy. And the cows won't touch water after sheep have used it. Just so. He's raised his cows to be so fussy, that's his tough luck. Oh, you know better than to say anything of that sort, Maggie. It ain't only Dexter. It's all the cattlemen downstream. Mm-hmm. How's your own sheep, Lim? Mm, doing first rate. But I'm a fear to Dexter and his crowd. I ain't. Well, you would be if you got to town at all. There's a sinful lot of talking going on. There ain't no telling how far the cowmen will go to get us out in this country. How'd the rest of the sheep herders feel? They're downright worried. We all been working hard to fix a good strong fence between our section and the Dexter line. It's the open range they're complaining about. Yeah, but they figure on taking over all our ranches, taking our houses and barns and everything. They wouldn't go that far, would they? Uh, I'm afeard so. It's a case of them taking downright desperate measures or losing all their stock on account of water. That's their own problem. The law says these places belong to us, and by Juniper Lamb, we're hanging on to them. Well, that ain't all, Maggie. Wait till you hear the rest. Well? The cowmen are bringing in professional gunslingers. They are? Yes, sir. And paying $5 a day, free cartridges, and a bounty on every sheep herder they get when the war starts. They can't. Well, they sure as thunder are. Gosh, Lynn, I can't believe it. I know Pete's done a lot of talking in his day. But I'm afeard that this time he means business. Bringing in gunslingers. They ain't handing out five dollars a day just to bluff, Maggie. One of these days, the whole bunch of them are going to come over the line and tell us to pack up and get, or stay and get buried. But the law... Will... Maggie, the law gets sort of hard to see in at times. Them cattlemen have the sheriff on their side, and like as not the U.S. Marshal as well. Don't go on it, Lynn. There may be a real range war before this is done with. Won't be much of a war, Maggie. You know how many sheepmen there are. Doggone few. The cowmen have ten to our one to start with. And with the fighters they're bringing in. Mm. Lynn, you said there was talking in town. Just so. Well, that same talking has really got me worried. Stay here and get shot down or, or clear out. Gosh, there just ain't much to choose. The Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, were riding toward Cripple Creek. As long as we're near here, Tonto, let's stop off at Maggie McGee's place and see how she's made out since the last time we saw her. Mm, not good. I wonder how permanent the peace we made a year ago has been. We not know yet. The town's just ahead, and we haven't very much further beyond that to go. We go see Dexter, Maggie, woman. We'll call on Maggie. I don't think Pete Dexter and the cattlemen would be very glad to see us. And them not remember you. Don't you think so, Tonto? No. Them not see much last time. I guess that's right. We acted the last time without showing ourselves to the Dexter men, except for a couple of minutes. Hey there, partner. Oh, oh there's oh, a scout. Oh. Glad to see you. Ain't you kind of foolish wearing your mask to come here? Why are you glad to see me? Shucks, the more the merrier. Who <laughs> reckon the news of Dexter's hind gunman has spread through the hull of the Badlands, ain't it? Has it? Gosh, I heard it, and I was sure deep in the Badlands. A team of oxen couldn't have dragged me out if I hadn't been told for sure that the sheriff sort of closing his eyes till the sheep and cow war settled. I see. You mean with Maggie, woman? Yeah. Them dreaded sheep herders ain't got to be moved. What have they ever done to you? Me? Nothing. Then why do you dislike them? Well, that's easy to tell. 
Dexter and the cowmen are paying me five a day to line up with them. For five bucks and bullets, I can sure hate the other side a plenty. Has the range war started yet? Ah, but it'll start most any time now. What are the plans? Well, you see, Dexter's outfit has to live here for some time. That's why they'd as soon not be too active in the shooting. Maybe the U.S. Marshal might get the full notion of holding court for murder or something. I see. But if we and from the Badlands do the shooting and get our pay and hightail back to where we come from, the law can just hunt us as long as it pleases. Whatever happens, Dexter can blame it on us. And he's really serious about wiping out the sheepmen. You're doggone right. There should be plenty of grazing for both. Ain't grazing, it's water. The sheep are upstream, you see. Oh, yes. Cows won't touch the water, and the springs have gone dry. Where are we supposed to meet? Dexter's place. By the way? Soon as you can get there. Soon as all the boys are ready, they'll move into the sheep section and order everyone out. Burn down the houses if they don't move out and start the shooting. Me, I hope they don't move. I'd sure as thunder like to unlimber my gun some. How many men from the Badlands are on hand? Eh, Ten, twelve or so. Is that engine riding with you? Yes. Dexter figures to hire about a score of men. There'll be plenty. And five dollars a day and bullets. Eh, Just so. Now you just ride straight on. Then when you get to the Cripple Creek, follow it upstream and you'll see Dexter's. This is the first big ranch you come to. Very well. Further upstream is Maggie McGee's place. That's the headquarters of the sheep people. The rest of them are scattered around a place close by. Very well. Come on, Tonto. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. I tried to give her a warning, but she wouldn't take it. Sick the dog on me instead. We'll fix her the whole tribe, Dexter. We sure will. Now remember, boys, all my regular hands, and them of Barton and Grant, will ride along with you. We'll sure have a sizable band of men. There'll be about 50, all told. <laughs> the sheep men won't have a chance. Our regular men could handle it, but i got to have some professional gun toters to take the blame for the shootings. None of you gents can object to one or two more notches in the butt of your shooting iron. <laughs> How soon do we start? Maybe tomorrow night. The sooner the better. You give them folks another chance to sell out? No. Then why wait? Sure, let's start tonight, Dexter. What's the sense of waiting? I expect a couple more men to join up with us. I'll wait till tomorrow and give them the chance to get here. Where's our bunk? On the grass or inside? All you extra men can sleep in a stable if you don't like the sky for a roof. Huh? I don't expect the war will last long. Yeah, it's a long ways to come for a couple of days' pay. I'll guarantee a week's pay, anyhow. That's fair, ain't it? Suits me. I reckon so. I come for the fun of it more than the money. Now, I'll go over everything once more, and then we'll break up till tomorrow sundown. We all leave here and ride to Maggie McGee's first. We tell her point blanks the case of get out and take the sheep along, or stay and get shot up. Yeah, that's how to find out here. That dog of hers starts yapping. Shoot the critter. Shoot the critter anyhow. It's just a show we ain't fooling. Tonto, listen carefully while I tell you what to do. Tonto, listen. Just shoot right then and there and set the house afire. Yeah. Then move on to the next place. Savvy? And two gun lamps and Scar Jackson, Squid Olson, Dan Deckard. Tonto, member, outlaw name. Now come on back to our horses. You'll get that message through, won't you, Tonto? Huh? Me do that. I'm going to ride for Maggie McGee and have a talk with her tonight. You ride hard and tell the U.S. Marshal what I told you. Want to do that? All right. <laughs> Ready then, Tonto? Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. After he learned that the cattlemen were hiring outlaws to fight the sheep herders, the Lone Ranger sent Tonto for the marshal and then rode to Maggie McGee's ranch. The fact that you just happened along, mister, sure proves to me that there's real trouble afoot, just like Lem here told me. I think Dexter and his men will go a lot further than they did the last time. Just what I says, mister. Ain't that so, Maggie? I hate to say so, Lem, but you was right. Why, Dad Radham, they're bringing in outlaws from all sides. There'll be about 20 gunmen here. Mm, more than enough to wipe us out. And the regular waddies from the cowmen's ranches will be with them. Close to 50 men, ain't it? Yes. That settles it. It don't settle nothing, Lem. 
This thing can't be settled till it's done in a fair and square way, and shooting us up won't do it. Well, for me, Maggie, I don't hanker to stay here and be shot up. Quitter. A man can't be condemned as a quitter for thinking his own hide is worth more than a pack of sheep. There's principle involved. Ain't that so, mister? That's exactly it, Maggie. Property rights for citizens are being established these days. The things that are done now will be the foundation for the ways things will be done for the generations to come. Yeah? Well, the generations to come can do what they want. I ain't anxious to get planted premature for lamb. Perhaps you won't need to be lamb. Huh? You'll get the sheepmen together and follow a plan. I ain't... Shut your mouth, lamb. Ain't the masked man showed us a way out once before? Now, let's listen to his scheme. That's all I ask of you. Well, I can't stand to lose nothing by listening. But that don't say I'll take to it. You will, doggone your skinny neck, or I'll take care of you before them gunmen get around to doing it. They plan to strike tomorrow night. How do you know? I was mistaken for one of the outlaws. Instead of going to the meeting, I listened outside, then came here before going to Dexter. You're going to Dexter? For a while. Now, here's what you will have to do tomorrow night. following day at sundown, the outlaws went to Dexter for their orders. Now, boys, the best way to do will be to go out in sections. Who's first? Let me be sure to get in on it. No. You'll all have the chance to get in on the fun, and don't get over anxious. Remember, you're not to shoot or set any fires unless you have to. No. you got to get that through your heads. I don't want murdering unless there ain't no other way out. I got an idea that when Maggie sees she can't bluff us no longer, she'll give in. If she does, she's to have the chance to leave this section. Yeah. Oh, what? Ah, this is going to be a no good range war. I no ain't anxious to have murder. Kill. If there ain't no other way, that's what it'll have to be. I'm glad you said that, Dexter. You're glad? Yes. Say, just who are you, anyhow? Take that mask off. And let every one of you know that I was in on this affair? No, Dexter. If you want my guns, you take the mask, too. Wonder who he is. I don't know, but he's got brains. We should have kept our names out in this, too. Are we ready to start? Sure. Two men right on ahead. Go through the strip, close to the creek, ride upstream, and wait outside of Maggie's place. Me and the others will follow along. All right. Wait. Well? Are you sure you're going to follow? Mean I said so? We don't want to do all the dirty work and have you turn us over to the law instead of having to pay us. He's a far-thinking critter, ain't he? Remember, Dexter, if you don't come along, we'll come back. You've got to be in this as deep as we are, and we'll be sure you won't squeal on us. We'll be along. Well, well. Come on, then, men. Indian, you get plenty of rewards for this. No, me not want reward. Every one of those killers is wanted by the law. This will be the biggest roundup of crooks this section has ever known. You not shoot mass friend. Oh, don't worry, Tonto. I savvy that he's with them only to make sure they come this way. Stand ready, boys. Come on, Silver! All right, close in. You're surrounded. It's the law. Got every one of you by thunder. This is a night to go down in history. You double cross and no I've been waiting for you a long time, Lefty. Now, jail won't hold us. It ain't going to need to hold you long, Scar. Just long enough to find you guilty of enough to hang I'll you. I'll get square with I'll you. I bet Dexter double crossed us. Come on. Heard the pack come to town, boy. Hey, get that last man, too. He's one of us. Oh, stupid. Get him. You got to take him, too. <laughs> now, ain't that too bad? He got clean away. But the rest of you won't get away. <laughs> Oh, 
boys. I'm afraid them blame fools start to shoot without giving them folks a chance. Well, if they've done that, Dexter, then I won't pay my share. Me neither. Well, there ain't but one thing we can do. That's to keep right on riding till we find out the truth. I ain't seen no fire started up yet. Remember them outlaws are looting the buildings before firing them. There was sure enough gunplay. Well, it weren't long, but it was sharp. There's Maggie's place. Yeah, light it up, too. Wonder where all the boys are at. I don't see no horses around nowhere. This is doggone mysterious. Right up here. Oh, 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 oh. This just ain't natural. Ranch, you and a couple others come inside the house with me. While the rest of the boys look around outside. Yeah, yeah and while you're looking, see if you can't spot some dead sheep. Come on, Grant. Pete, maybe I've got the situation doped out. Well? It don't seem possible that they've all cleared out just as they were supposed to, but I'll bet that's what's been done. Maggie, you in there? Knock on the door again. I'm going in. Hey, Maggie! You here? Maggie McGee! The house is sure enough empty. Empty and lighted up. Every lap are going full blast. I'm going to look around. Them killers must have got their orders mixed and driven them off before we got here. Maybe she's dead in the next room. I'll have a look. Gosh, I hope she ain't. I almost feared to open the door and find out. Go on, Pete. Open it. I done a heap of talking, but gosh, I'd hate to see Maggie dead. She wasn't a bad well, sort. Maybe we maybe we went too far, Pete. Well, you can't back out now. Go on, look inside. She ain't here. Her kit bag was always in that stand in the corner. That's gone. And her dresser is cleaned right off, and what extra clothes she had are gone from them hooks. Hey, there's a note propped up again in the picture. Let me see that. What's it say? Uh, Grant! Grant, she's cleared out. She has. She's done just what we wanted her to do. Cleared out complete and took her clothes and personal things along with her. She says I can have this house and welcome to it. <laughs> well, I'll be. That I can have the land and use this part of the crippled creek for cows. Oh, poor Maggie. Gosh, she must have felt mighty bad. But then we couldn't do nothing else, Pete. I reckon not. Hey, Pete, we looked around outside. Well, find anything? The rain's all cleared off. Ain't a sheep in sight. What about the other houses? They're all vacated. Every sheepman around is cleared out. Pete! It's a victory. Why, gosh, all fish hooks. This thing has worked out even better than we dared to hope. If anyone would have told me this would happen, I'd have said they was plumb loco. Dexter. Oh, there's one of the men. Where's all the rest? The law has them. The law? Not the sheriff. No. The United States Marshal found out that a lot of wanted men were here. He set a trap and captured them. You the only one that got away? Yes, I'm the only one. <laughs> Grant, this is the best evening I ever seen. Now we don't even have to pay them, man. So you're... Oh, the... oh, hold on, hold on, mister. You you get paid all right. Maybe you sent the marshal to get them. No, no, I swear I didn't. Every one of those men think you did. Well, then they'll think the same of me. What else can they think? If any one of them ever gets out of jail, he'll come to square accounts. By murder. That's the only way those men know to square accounts. Pete... There ain't but one thing I'm to do. I'm not a killer. You needn't worry about me, Dexter. But you'd better make certain none of those other men get out of jail. Hey, well, well that is... Hey. The marshal will expect you and the sheriff to give them all the help you can to hang those killers. But you? What about you? I came here to tell you that this house and all the other houses are yours. Maggie and Lem and all the rest herded all the sheep today and moved them away from here. Good. I'll pay you off then. I don't want your money. Hey, there's a buckboard coming. Well, who's bringing that? Who's bringing that? That's Maggie McGee's voice. It's Maggie herself. You men, stay right where you are. There's a few things to say to you. I got a plenty to say, you ornery scheming cow to you, Pete Dexter. <laughs> you thought you'd get the best of me, huh? Maggie. You cleared out of here. You're doggone right, I did. Leave that buckboard and come on in here, Lem. I'm coming, Maggie. Where did you now go? Now, you listen. For a change, I'll do some of the talking, and this will be the last time I'll have anything to say to you and your partners. You wanted our place here. Well, yeah, Maggie. It was just the water. Well, you got it. You rid away from your own homes to come and take ours. We moved out bag and baggage. We took our sheep and circled north to leave these places for you. Yeah? Then after you and your ugly-faced partners left your houses, we just moved in. Yeah, yeah what? You moved in? What about my wife and kids? Your wife and kids are packing up. We told them they was moving. You can't... Dexter, do... I've took your house. <laughs> it's better than this one, but it should be. You got water here where you didn't have before. You better move your stock tomorrow or we'll move it for you. You can't get away with this. Why not? You can't live in two houses at the same time, can you? It's a fair exchange, Dexter. You can straighten out the matter of deeds later on. But you and us can't use the same creek. We Why? We're going to and you're living here. All your clothes and things are on that buckboard outside, Dexter. Fact is, you're moved. <laughs> Dexter, your cows wouldn't touch the Cripple Creek water after the sheep used it. No. 
But if your cows use it here, upstream from the sheep, both cows and sheep will get all the water they need. Why, doggone it, Dexter. The masked man's right. Why, I... By thunder, he is right. It's as simple as that. The trouble is, Pete, when you get all head up, you get me mad. And then we're both too doggone hot-headed to sit down and talk sane and work things out round a meeting. You can both live here from now on. And this should be a real end of the feud you've been having. Maggie, as far as I'm concerned, the deal goes. Me too. And me. It better. If I don't, there'll be a first-class jailbreak, and about a score or two gunmen will be hankering for your hide. Gosh, Maggie, without range troubles to talk over, I won't have no reason to be calling at your house frequent. Uh, your new house, I mean. I'll sure miss seeing you. <laughs> you can stay around as much as you please, then. Sakes alive, without you around to laugh at, I'd get plumb lonesome. But you, Pete Dexter, and all your breed, stay out. Oh, The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger, Incorporated.